Mitch Asher, Product Specialist for Motion Control. Today I'm going to talk about how to install a Kinetics 5700 servo drive. So here we have our Kinetics 5700 servo rack, and I'm going to replace this inverter right there. So first, we need to take the proper safety precautions and use your facility's appropriate lockout and tagout procedures. So for here, we're just going to simply unplug this demo to remove all power. Now that power is removed from the demo, we can begin to work on it. So simply remove all the connectors from the old drive. Now that all the connectors are removed and the bolts are loosened, we can simply rotate and lift up the drive. So now that we have our new drive out of the box, we can remove the sticker that reminds us that we need to have the appropriate jumper screw configuration. Now this is a very important step to choose the appropriate jumper screw configuration because if the jumper screw is either in or not in when it's not supposed to be, you could potentially damage your drive. So to look this information up, you would simply go into the Kinetics 5700 user manual. For our application, we need to install the jumper screw. So to do this, we have two boxes that came with the drive. One is your DC bus connector, and the other one has all our connectors in it and jumper screw. This is the box we're gonna focus on right now. So I'm gonna simply go in. Find our jumper screw and install it. On the right hand side, you can see a little black slot Open that up and just install it finger tight. Then close it. So now that we have the appropriate jumper screw configuration for this drive, I can remove it back on the rack. And now I can begin to add all the connectors again. Now one thing that's important to note is if you are replacing a Series A drive with a Series B drive, the connectors are going to look a little different. They're going to have these cams, these orange cams on the side, and this simply allows the connector to be seated more firmly in place in the drive. So it's important to note that the Series A connectors will fit in a Series B drive, but not vice versa, so it is important to keep the old ones as spares. First, I'm going to install the I.O. connectors. Next, I'm going to install the safety I.O. Lastly, I'm going to install the DC bus bar. Make sure this is seated firmly in place. And then install your 24 volts. And install the rest, the remaining Ethernet cords. Now check over everything. Make sure everything's firmly connected. And once you have checked over everything, go ahead and power back the drive. So give the drive a moment to power up and boot up. So now that the drive is powered up, we can begin to apply the correct IP address. So to do this, we can go on the HIM and press the gear icon and scroll down to network, and then hit enter. Hit static IP, and this drive is IP address 192.168.1.30. We want this one to be 31. So we're gonna scroll over and scroll up till the drive reads 31, and then hit enter. Until we're back on the screen, then go back to the home screen. And your the old IP address is displayed, so that means we need to power cycle the drive. Simply unplug 24 volts, 
and then plug it back in. And as the drive boots up, you will see the new IP address displayed on the screen. So as you can see, now that the drive is booted up, we can see the IP address on the screen. So the last step is to simply put the correct firmware revision in the drive. In this case, I'm gonna leave it. It's the newest firmware revision that came with the drive, and I'm okay with that. I simply need to update that in my program. It is very important to note that if you have a Series A drive and you're replacing it with a Series B drive, that the firmware revisions do not overlap. So you simply need to pick the correct firmware revision that you're comfortable with using and then update it in the program. And that's all. In summary, we have three things that we need to look at. We need to install the appropriate ground screw configuration. We need to have the correct IP address and we need to make sure we have the correct firmware revision on the drive. If you would like to know more about this, please contact your Warner Electric representative.